Hey guys, this is a video to go through the branch version 0.1.8.5 you can see here. Uh, done a little bit since then. I have a, I did already record this already record this video once, but I don't know, it just it was a bit too long and it was just a couple of bits I felt I could do a bit better. So usual sort of thing, I'll showcase just what I've done. Uh, some of them, some of these th these issues I've done, I've already done videos on. And where I've done that, I'll mention it, and then you can just watch those videos if you want. Because otherwise, this will this could easily be like an hour video, and I don't want it to be that really. So the first one, fix stamina item usage bug. Okay, so it is here, consumable. Issue was. I had max stamina in both. Version 1 didn't have this problem. Version 2 had this problem because when I was moving a bunch of stuff from the old way of how the items worked to the new way of using a like master item blueprint, I just, yeah, user error. So it never, it technically did work, but it was never used because the max was always never less than the max, you see. So that's that's that one. Fixed storage item movement bug. Yeah, there was a problem where it's that one and also where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's one of these. And that one. So 119 and 83. There was a problem here in this. So originally that was like that. So the, the bug was, let's say I, the second, I'm trying to drag the second slot from uh, the storage back to my inventory. If there was two items, so slot zero is the first slot, slot one, uh, slot one is the second slot. So essentially index zero, first item, index one, second item. Because it was like that, if there was more than one item, it would just pull the first item every time. So that's just another quick fix. Only took a couple of minutes, fortunately. Added mouse sway and shake on shooting. Already got a video about this. I will show it, but and I won't go into too much detail because yeah, the, the minutes really do rack up when I explain like the wider concepts. But okay. It is, where have you gone? There we go. So the way, the way I've got it, I've got it set up using uh, a min-max that fires on projectile here. So if you've got ammo and you're shooting, because obviously if you know, if you haven't got ammo, there wouldn't be recoil. There wouldn't be this sway creation. So if you've got ammo and you're shooting, min-max and that's just set it if you're not shooting, so you, you, you can't create recoil if you've got no bullets, essentially, or you're not pulling the trigger. So it's just setting it back to zero. And that's the that's the min, that's the max. And it adds a, a, a min max the, to the uh, trajectory for where the projectiles go. So the essential takeaway is it creates the illusion of recoil. And this here, the mouse sway creates the illusion of recoil on the the mouse. So I've got I've already got projectiles. I think it's version two or version three video, and I've got a mouse uh, sway video. Worth watching both of them. Um, yeah, I just give it a bit more, give it get a bit more of a, like a deep dive into it, so you can like do something similar. Uh, added aiming crosshair. So there is a widget here. Just that, uh, let's go to the other screen. Just that, and that's all it is. It's just a, it's an image. It's not even center because I just, it's just a very quick prototype. I did it in uh, oh, Photoshop, and then I went into project settings. I go to cursors, cursor, and I just add one, and the drop down I picked was crosshairs. And I just pointed to that widget. It's that it's that straightforward. 
and then on aiming I make it to the crosshairs if you're not aiming or if you release the aiming button it goes back to the normal I'll show you it quickly it does something weird like it needs to initialize it because if I do aim now I'll get the gun out if I press control to aim you see the crosshair doesn't pop up but once I shoot it does pop up it does behave so it's just something to initialize that's that. I did lower the volume on the volume mixer this time. The first video I didn't, so it would have blown your eardrums out. Uh, Press this ammo widget between levels. Yeah, um, quickly show this. The issue was ammo widget is this. Pops up, tells you how much ammo you've got. Uh, huh, that's interesting. I must need to refresh one of the sprites. Something weird's going on there. Yeah, so you swap your ammo types going to here it was forgetting it was forgetting it, it was disappearing so then you need to like holster and then hold holster, unholster I the widget appears on the where have we gone on here uh, there widget toggle and there's a widget create which is done at start now and the widget whether it toggles uh, visible invisible lies on is holstered so i just had to pass that is holstered true into the game instance feed it through so when you load up the level this way i won't be able to find it i better stuck it somewhere at the end i must find it now i've decided to <laughs> show you it where have you gone where have you gone oh it's here there we go, create it and then the toggle on, because that's begin play, but this is when you actually press play in the main menu, does that. So yeah, just feeds it through, keeps it persistent, puts it on the game instance, pulls it back into the main blueprint, so it doesn't, um, it just, yeah, consistent between levels. I created a resume button on the main menu, I didn't... I didn't like it. Like I like kind of the idea of it, where some games you load it up and you just press resume or continue. I kind of liked it, but I felt a bit like I was over engineering things. Um, so I just went to like the classic what setup you have now. Uh, still got the code, just hidden the button, I believe. Um, clicking main menu in save slot does not trigger main menu. Yeah, so it did trigger the main menu. The issue was I have uh, the main menu relies on run count and run counts like a, exactly that counts the runs so when you first play it, it's zero so main menu pops up then you go into another level it's one so main menu doesn't pop up so I just needed to say when you go to main menu on that save widget just turn run count back to zero and then the main menu pops up so it's just an issue with needing to uh, change the run count variable migrate widgets to a one location yep so they're all in here now uh, blueprints all in here bunch of redirectors that I'm gonna have to fix up but I'm not gonna do it on call uh, I'll talk about redirects actually they're coming up uh, assets into one place, yeah, a uh, bunch of less like old old version one stuff from last year, moving it around. Belt lowers <clears throat> on the PDW aiming, just an issue with the pixel. It was like one pixel too low, so he's like his torso looked a bit too long. Holster while aiming, yeah, I will show you it just because it's a bit of a quickie. So. Too many things now, I need to tidy everything up again. Originally, it just looked like that, and the branch was working off is a weapon equipped. <clears throat> the problem being, if you were aiming and you held aim and then you pressed the holster button, it would holster it, but then you'd still be able to fire. So, just the. Uh, just made it realistic now, so obviously you can't holster if you're trying to aim because it needs to be in your hands. So, I just created uh, that. So, not aiming, not brace aiming probably get away with just doing not his aiming because brace aiming feeds to a, um, aiming 
I haven't done Brace Aiming for version 2 yet, but uh, yeah, the focus of Brace Aiming, I won't, I won't make the video too long, the focus of Brace Aiming is essentially like you can point a gun with one hand or you can point a gun with two hands in real life and the two hands you'd be steadier. That sort of concept, so you just control to aim, control and then hold control and press shift, control and shift to brace aim, so it just as a different stance. Um, thinking I'll do less recoil and more like more likely to get a critical hit. That's the sort of code I'll be doing for that when I've done that. Stuck on shoot animation after moving. Yeah, um, just triggering the flip books. They're out, out of sync. I just had to, I just had to make sure all the bulls, because uh, I've got a bunch of booleans to decide what you're doing for certain um, paper ZD animation blueprints. But yeah, sorted that. Press play. You'd uh, reset blank slate. Yep. When you die. I have a reset variables on game instance GI, so default variables, and I I just told it to run the default variables when you press play, because pressing play is fine, like that. There you go, everything's default. But there was an issue where if you went play, main menu, play, it it didn't wipe you wipe your variables and now it now it does just had to stick that function at the end of the main menu uh, element I tidied up redirectors so there's a couple of videos online great videos already to do with redirectors so I won't blow out the YouTube with that these are redirectors they're not normally shown you need to go to filters other filters show redirectors when you let's say that was version 1 and version 2 was somewhere else like say like a different folder if i dragged it you'll you'll know this yourself you'll drag folders and sometimes they'll just port across it'll get rid of like uh cut and paste in like the windows file system but sometimes it's like a, a copy and paste or it cuts all the information out but then it still keeps the base folder that's because of redirectors when you move something creates redirector to go hey it used to be here now it's here so the way to fix that rather than deleting it and risking the wrath of the gods and things it might work might mess everything up and you might need to do like a git reset hard head to roll back to whatever your, uh, your last commit was you can just show selectors get the filter on like that like i said through there Right click and do fix up and it'll make them all disappear and it'll tidy everything up. So I'll do this after the call. Turn the protagonist container into a parent. Yeah, off the back of the storage video I did. So there's three containers. Originally, Dresser Large John was the parent and then there was just Jackie and Barry. I didn't, didn't like it. So I created a true parent, true master. And then I just create a child, child blueprint for John, just to follow the whole like effective object oriented programming, like in inheritance sort of abstraction stuff. So that was that uh, level log system. Yeah, in here, big video on uh, persistent storage, 50 minutes long. I did a couple of days ago. Cracked it after a week of hard hard testing um, there's a thing here where it creates uh, random items so random starting items from a structure file and I needed it to only do it once so the first time you're in the level do it next time pull it from the game instance so I created something which logs the levels and the amount of times you've been in the levels and then I fed it into the game instance so when you load up a game it still remembers that log that's what that log is I did a video on the level log and the wider um, persistent storage stuff, so I'd, I'd look at those. Um, need to persist auto-generated storage items. Yep. Yeah. So I got manually generated storage items to persist with this, but getting it to 
persist with the items you put into the storage, the items you remove from the storage, so add and remove, getting that to then persist into the game instance for you then to be able to pull it back out when you go back into the level and persist. That The 15 minute uh, storage persistence video goes into great detail. I had to create this. Um, I'll make a bit of space so you can see. So, very gloss description, glossing overview is first time this container is loaded in this level, generate the items if you need to generate the items. If not, and, and then feed it into the game instance. If it's the second and subsequent times, look at the class. So because this is a parent and these are children, look to see whether the container in this level is dress a large Barry, dress a, dress a large Jackie, dress a large John, whatever's whatever one it is in the list. Oh, in the list. I had a moment there where I felt like I deleted it. <laughs> but yeah, so look at the list. Okay, if they match in what's already in the game instance storage items list, brilliant. Add them back into the storage. Sorry, I just had to clear my throat. Uh, so that's for the generated items. For the ones where you add an item in or you pull it out manually, I had to trigger this trigger like an update container on whenever something's added or removed this update slot index is on all these adds and removes so whenever something changes trigger this whenever that's done trigger that that triggers this uh, custom event and it does exactly the same thing as that but where they match bipolar current information and then add the new present information into the game instance so wipe it wipe that section of dresser large john and then add this back into dresser large john just like that add it in that's that right click storage uh yeah we've already talked about that one with storage uh, thing before the wrong index oh lack of index need to persist manually yep that is this section specifically walk and holster sprites yeah let me show you so rather than it just appear in his hands and then appear on his back I create like a smooth transition and I had to do them for the walk so you see the legs are it's not quite right I need to get the sprites right with the movement but yeah essentially it does that same thing and same for the hang of so out in now it's out in rather than it just being like boom it's in his hands boom it's gone if you are moving as you were holstering or on the holstering so create that uh, like a staggered animation flip up uh like migration i guess you could say to just is holstered just unholstered unholstered and then just is holstered to do like the getting it out in your hands putting it away on in its holster uh, transition you saw there jump yep just an issue these was just an issue with the way jump was working where it created a very quick jump animation and when you jumped it was doing the wrong one so if the pdw was on his back the smg you'd jump and it would be in his hands and then when the jump animation stopped it'd be in his back or oh, the pistol you have the pistol and he's, he's holster then he jump and the pistol would disappear and then when the animation stops the pistol will be back so it's just an issue of just wrong sprite I mean, when i moved it to version 2 still an issue with pdw fixed that yep yeah, the the barrel was a bit the barrel was a bit too long in some of the flip box but yeah cracked it now so the barrel should match on all the things where it's like it's on there the on the character's back the barrel shouldn't be too long or too short anymore and update version 2 to version 3 animations yeah those last one i had to do in all my other videos when you run it did like the version 2 so the 70 by 70 pixels rather than what we see here 140 by 140 so i made a very quick version 3 run so you like that I've done it for all of them. 
quickly mentioned it before, but I'll just go into detail. Version one was 35 by 35 pixels. Uh, I'll show you actually after I just show you him running. So just like that, Not, nothing special, just like a placeholder. Um, yeah, so here we go. Uh, this one, version one was 35 by 35, tiny, 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 tiny. Version 2, 70 by 70. Version 3, 140 by 140. Does that every time? Is that a little bit? 140 by 140. Version 4 will be version 3 is 140 by 140, but a polish, a polish pass. Just clean up, make it. Version 4 needs to be perfect. I don't, I'm not going to do the pixels any higher than 140 by 140. And yeah, that's it for. Uh, this branch. Uh, the original version, I gave a bit of insight into what I'm going to do into the future, so I'll just I'll replicate that for this version, the one, this one that I've uploaded. Currently, I've I want to work on like the sell and trade widget. There's an issue where it once one of the things was it wasn't hit. Testable. I did non-hit testable self when I showed the non-hit testable self and children. So something, the like the weapon rank, the weapon skill blueprint, though invisible, was uh, Z ordered in front of in in front of it. So I'll just show you it very quickly. So let's grab these things. If I have more than one thing. I can right click and throw away and this widget pops up and now this works. Originally there was something Z ordered in front so this wasn't interactable. And yeah, sorted that. That's the same widget used for sell, but sell has another problem. And then there's also the trade widget, which I'm looking at in this in the branch after this one that I'm on. Um yeah, broke fix something, broke something else. That was working. So Fix that widget, so throw and sell. I just need to now work on the trade widgets, and then that'll be that mini branch done. And then, yeah, just like the last video, the original one I talked about the one I'm really excited to do. So, zombies and doors. I have this at the moment. You saw when you go through the levels, it just loads you up in a new level. I want, I've got uh, this to do. So, it doesn't look like much. If I press play, door opens door closes I've got a door blueprint here and I want you to when you go through a new level make that sprite of your door you've you've used you've interacted with to transfer through on the door blueprint feed that to this door level as a new sprite so the doors match just like just like Resident Evil and anything where you open a door and it does a door transition and then load this transition level up door closes boom and then it'll load up the hallway level for example I'm gonna finally create that i made this a little bit a while ago Get excited to do that and zombies i want to create idle sprite idle sprites for every single enemy within the game uh at, at version 3 quality so 140 by 140 currently the zombies are at uh, not there, not that one. Anyway, I, I can just show you through here. Full blueprint, viewpoint. Currently, they're 170 by 170. So, uh, yeah, upscale list to 140 by 140, and all the other zombies. Currently, I've only got two, but I've got a full list. Not just zombies, but enemies in general, I should say. Great idea. So, I really want to make idle. Idle sprites, so then we can see everything, everything that's going to be, you're going to be able to fight, and then probably after this branch, I'll do a bunch, I'll do idle sprites for every single NPC within the game, and then you got, I don't know, there's there's loads to do, but it's really exciting, and I'm I'm I've enjoyed it. These were the other branches since moving it to GitHub uh, online repo. Uh, the way are other branches, as you can imagine by the numbers. But, yep. This branch here, sell and trade, 
not the one I'm talking about now, but the one I'm in the video, but the one I'm actually doing now. Sell and trade will be done probably by the end end of the week, maybe end of next week. Zombies and doors will take a little bit longer because I'm gonna have to really oh get Photoshop out and start making some magic and then feeding it in and then creating lots of uh, child blueprints for all the different uh, zombies but yeah that's it hope you really enjoyed it or at least found it a little bit insightful uh, there'll be more to come and thank you for your time